Hello everyone. So my name is uh, Dr. Madhav Rao. I'm a faculty at IIIT Bangalore, and uh, I'll be teaching this course, uh, Design and Analysis of VLSI Subsystems. So in this particular introduction lecture, I just want to uh, give you an overview of this particular course and its course contents, and uh, how do we go about uh, this particular, you know, um, the, the course learning. So that is what I want to uh, uh, brief you about on this particular uh, introduction lecture. Uh, starting about myself, uh, I'm a faculty at uh, IIIT Bangalore. Uh, so I've joined uh, IIIT Bangalore in 2012, July, and since then I've been teaching uh, different courses. Uh, I've been teaching uh, the VLSI subsystem course uh, for almost uh, six years now, and uh, I really enjoy teaching this. And that is the reason, one of the reasons why I want to teach this in an NPTEL platform so that uh, you know more students can possibly benefit from this particular uh, course. So this uh, course uh, spans from, uh, you know, talking about uh, the inverter, which is a more uh, primitive circuit to that of a large scale or a higher order uh, digital circuit, such as an adder and the uh, multiplier circuits. Initially, we will look into the inverter aspects. Uh, we'll go over a brief about uh, the transistors, uh, NMOS and PMOS transistors and its uh, current characteristics, uh, IV characteristics. And uh, finally, go about understanding the DC characteristics or the transfer characteristics, which uh, which will behave like uh, this kind of a uh, profile. So uh, normally, uh, you know, in a digital logic design, one can uh, 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 one can see this particular transfer characteristics. But in this particular course, we will try to understand why is this particular uh, transfer characteristics behaves for uh, for an inverter circuit. And what is the use of this particular transfer characteristics? Uh, can we actually alter this particular uh, transfer characteristics for getting, uh, you know, uh, for, for achieving some other uh, performance parametrics? So in this particular digital course, we will also look into, uh, you know, three major aspects. One is uh, the uh, the delay of, of a given uh, digital circuit, power estimation for a given digital circuits, and as well as uh, understanding the footprint of a digital circuit. So all these three uh, parameters, we will try to estimate or we will try to analyze it uh, uh, for for a, uh, for a discrete uh, digital designs as well as and then try to apply it uh, or foresee it uh, for a higher order digital circuit. So to understand uh, or to estimate the delay in a rough handy calculation, uh, one has to uh, understand uh, the diffusion capacitance and that is something we will see in the second module. Uh, if we try to extract the capacitances for a given uh, you know, transistor level uh, digital circuit and then uh, try to understand uh, the switching resistance, so we can uh, then approximate any kind of a uh, uh, digital uh, gates, such as in this particular case, a three input uh, NAND gate is given, extract that or approximate that into an RC circuit. And uh, once we have the RC circuit and estimating the delay or the performance of a given circuit becomes uh, easier. Uh, power aware design. So given a digital circuit design, uh, you know, how do we estimate the, the energy component or the power component? Uh, so the average power component. So that is something we will uh, look into this uh, particular in this particular course. There is something called as uh, you know rail designs based on the uh, the VDD values, whether it's a one volts or one point two volts or 0.8 volts. You know how do we interface between the the lower rail designs and then the higher rail designs? So that is also something uh, we will we will have one particular module on that. So these days again, uh, you know, it's not about uh, the dynamic power or rather when when the the logic the output is going to switch. You know, we'll not only look into that particular dynamic power aspect, but also look into when. Uh, you know, the static uh, uh, power as well. So to understand the static power, one has to understand what kind of leakage currents are expected uh, uh, in this particular uh, digital circuit. So two uh, major or dominant uh, leakage currents we will uh, try to understand. One is the gate leakage current, another one is the subthreshold leakage currents. And then from those currents, we will then try to evaluate what is the, uh, the static power. Right, so what I meant for uh, with respect to the power aware designs is once the given designs is given to us, then how do we estimate, uh, you know, what is the power aspect uh, for that particular designs? Uh, we will also have a close look into the interconnects. Interconnects uh, is nothing but a piece of the uh, metal wire which connects from one logic design to another logic design. And uh, these days, because of the uh, you know more complex designs, uh, we will have you know one, one can understand that the interconnect itself is uh, uh, is conceding a lot of delays or is conceding a lot of power, and that is something uh, you know we will do. Uh, we will try to analyze that. And given an interconnect, we will try to approximate it into an RC circuit. And then once we have an RC circuit, I think we should be able to understand what is the uh, the power or the energy that is being uh, dissipated by the VDD rail. 
and also what is the effect of this particular interconnects on the overall logic design in terms of the performance and uh, there are some uh, ways to mitigate the crosstalk effects and that is something we will uh, have a lecture on uh, we will also look into the different combinatorial circuits like the pseudo nmos uh, dynamic uh, inverter and then the domino logic uh, uh, we'll try to analyze this and then the, the benefits of this uh, in terms of the uh, especially in terms of the delay uh, and then uh, we will uh, look into the uh, you know the tri-state multiplexer which is kind of the most popular multiplexer designs one one can uh, get and uh, we'll also look into the stick diagram so this is uh, specifically the stick diagram uh, of the tri-state multiplexers but not only this particular multiplexers we will also have a couple of lectures on the stick diagram for uh, for drawing uh, or for uh, representing the different uh, gate level designs so the stick diagram is the closest level uh, understanding of the footprint uh, you know and is closest in the sense that the next step will be drawing the layout Although the layout is a little bit more complex and it requires, uh, you know, um, uh, a more uh, sophisticated software. So what we'll try to do is we'll understand the stick diagram. The stick diagram is 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 one level uh, down than that of the layout designs. Uh, but from the stick diagrams, we should be able to get a uh, uh, a conservative footprint values for a particular uh, digital design. Uh, and then we will, uh, you know, we'll jump into the sequential circuits and uh, two major components, the latch designs and then the flip-flop designs. We'll try to understand, uh, you know, the standard cell design for a latch, understand the static timing analysis in the sense uh, we'll try to evaluate what is the really the setup time and then what is the real, uh, you know, the hold time. And then similarly, we will try to evaluate the setup and hold time for the flip-flop designs and also understand, you know, why this particular design is considered the most uh, robust design and that's why it has been uh, considered as a standard cell library design. So there are, you know, three aspects to it, uh, you know, it, it, it overcomes some of, the, uh, uh, some of the aspects and that's the reason uh, we will see in the standard cell library designs. And then, uh, you know, this is the stick diagram of uh, the one bit full adder circuit. Uh, so which, which, which consists of, uh, you know, either 32 transistors or 28 transistors. So this is particular uh, stick diagram uh, of a one bit full adder consisting of 28 transistors. So 14 transistors on the uh, PMOS side and 14 transistors on the NMOS side. Uh, so we will understand uh, what is this and how do we draw this particular uh, stick diagram by uh, having uh, the P, uh, uh, P diffusion lines and then the N, N uh, diffusion lines as well as the polysilicon uh, lines. So we'll try to evaluate, uh, you know, how do we design uh, uh, for a given uh, logic design or for a given digital circuit design, how do we uh, come up with the stick diagrams? And then I think, uh, you know, once we understand uh, the one bit full adder, then I think uh, the next uh, module will be on the adders and then the multiplier design. So this is one such, uh, you know, the propagate and generate architecture uh, for designing uh, the uh, the adder uh, system. So a kind of a 16-bit adder system is designed and the propagate and generate architecture, we will have a close look into it, which will help us to, uh, you know, simplify the adder subsystem designs. And these adders will be uh, useful in uh, designing the multipliers, uh, which is again, uh, one of the major or a frequent uh, arithmetic components, which is kind of used for the digital uh, subsystem level. Uh, and uh, finally, we will talk about the compressor designs uh, for uh, for the multipliers, which which is uh, you know most frequently used the multiplier uh, the compressor designs for achieving the multiplier product outputs. And uh, we'll also look into uh, the exact multiplier, which will give us the exact results, and then some of the approximate uh, multiplier design, which will give us an inex inexact results. But uh, you know, in in currents uh, in the, in the today's um, uh, neural network or the machine learning applications, or rather the image processing or the signal processing applications, where the uh, you know a little bit of inaccuracy is uh, is is okay. So in that sense, the approximate multiplier designs and what are the benefits of the approximate multiplier designs is something we will look in the, in the last topic. So finally, coming uh, to the de design and analysis of the VLSS subsystem course. So this course is actually spans from the basic inverter circuits to the subsystem design. You can see that, you know, we started from um, a very basic uh, inverter module and then we will reach into the approximate multiplier, which is, uh, which is a very uh, novel uh, subsystem designs. And this will also help the students to take, uh, you know, more advanced courses such as the VLS architecture and the ASIC design. Uh, so this course helps to understand the fundamentals, uh, but at the same time introduces to some of the advanced topics, you know, we have seen uh, in, in this particular introduction lecture, 
uh so i have anyways uh, you know go, gone over the uh, multiplier designs or the uh, you know the approximate uh, multiplier computing designs but also there are some other aspects like the interconnect aware designs using the repeaters uh, to make uh, the interconnect uh, resilient and as well as uh, uh, to make um, some of the designs such as the dvfs dynamic voltage frequency scaling so some of those topics within the the sub modules are kind of more advanced topics so we will also look into that so this course actually spans uh, from you know very primitive inverter designs to the subsystem design and individual modules you know you can also look into we will also look into some of the specific or finer details and that's why it's call it as you know a is a kind of an advanced courses which uses uh, some of the primitive modules the course is actually not about uh, the verilog level designing and then the fpga and asic design although i call it as a subsystem design this is a subsystem design at a circuit level and understanding the subsystem design at from the circuit level that is what the course is about the course is not about the verilog and the fpga or the asic design uh, which is kind of heavily used in today's uh, subsystem design so the textbooks and then the references which i'll be majorly be using the major you know the textbooks uh, or the textbook is uh, the westheim harris textbook the cmos vlsi design a circuits and systems perspective and any textbook uh, in any any edition you know at least the fourth edition and about that will be useful for this particular course so if you are taking this course i think uh, you know you can you can procure this uh, particular textbook the reference textbook which will I'll, uh, I'll use to in some of the topics is the digital integrated circuits uh, a design perspective from dirabe so these two are the uh, major uh, um, you know frequently used textbooks for uh, uh, for any kind of a digital vlsi uh, system or subsystem course but i'll be uh, using mostly this particular textbook so if you are interested uh, to pursue a career in this particular area i would urge all of you to uh, procure this particular textbook right and i'll also uh, be uh, sending few of the papers for which i have uh, i've derived some of the lectures uh, but majorly uh, the the lecture contents are borrowed from this particular textbook and few of the uh, the papers which i'll be anyways be referring to and uh, sh sharing with you right hopefully i think this is what uh, uh, the the overview of this particular digital uh, uh, design and analysis of the vlsi subsystem course so uh, i'll be uh, more than happy to see all of you in the in the uh, in the subsequent lectures so thank you for watching this uh, recording i'll see you then bye